Norway and this is Christina Franson. We're from Zion Massage College and we are just starting on a video series called Ethics in Action for Massage Therapists. Christina teaches the business and professional ethics class at Zion Massage College and we thought this was important stuff that we should start uh, discussing and having a forum for. We actually noticed that there's not a lot for healthcare at all that's really out there and easily accessible with ethics. And part of that is probably when dealing with clients, right? Right. But, and patients. But part of that is probably, probably because ethics has a lot of gray area. And so we end up needing to really speak about things in case scenarios and looking at individual situations to really get a clear feel for what the right ethical choice is. Right. Fortunately, though, there are some guidelines and some best practices. So just to get us started today, we wanted to talk about three strategies that a massage therapist could utilize when they're dealing with a client who is being inappropriate or who they kind of suspect of being inappropriate in the session, uh, when they want to kind of manage the session and bring everything back to the focus of the massage, which is on health and healing. So the first one that we wanted to talk about mm -hmm. was if you as a massage therapist are dealing with a client that is exhibiting inappropriate behavior, we want to give you some examples of that. So Christina, some examples of inappropriate behavior are things like what? So anything unwanted, like mm -hmm. unwanted physical touch, unwanted jokes, comments, um, movements, any unreasonable demands in the massage, as, also, as well as aggressive behavior. Okay, okay. And some examples of movement could be like the person's really just kind of shuffling around on the table moving and stuff. Um, and it could be aggressive behavior, could be any type of threatening things. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course any sexual comments, things like that. Any of that mm -hmm. type of stuff. And usually these things are, on the surface pretty innocent and maybe truly really innocent. Um, a lot of people don't understand. They're the, they're the client or the patient. They're not, you know, they're not taught ethics and they're not no. taught professional ethics. And so when they go into a healthcare provider, they might be nervous. They might actually think that their jokes are funny, you know, and they might not know that this is inappropriate. So it's really important for the massage therapist to be able to educate and to be able to clearly set boundaries with their client. Right. Okay. So the first one we want to talk about, so one of the first strategies, and there are many, but today we're just going to talk about three. But the first one that we want to talk about is if you're dealing with a client that is starting to become inappropriate, you don't want to add any energy to it. So you want to refrain from adding any additional energy to their comments or actions. So this means that we wouldn't want to giggle or laugh about it. No. We wouldn't want to act shocked about it. All those things add energy to it. And that could send mm -hmm. a confusing message to a client. Yes, so we had an example of that. We actually had a student that told us about a session that she was in and it was actually a couple session, husband and wife. And the husband said to the massage therapist, the student massage therapist, for, first the student said, would you like for me to work on your neck a little bit? And the guy said, will there be necking? Or I hope there's not necking or something like that. And that's innocent enough, but it's really important to bring that focus back to the session and to not add energy to it. So laughing at that point would have been inappropriate. Um, acting shocked would be inappropriate. What is an appropriate response to something like, will there be necking, you know, those types of comments. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And one of the best appropriate responses is that would be unprofessional in a massage therapy environment. Yeah, yeah. And just very clear, okay. simply mm -hmm. stated, mm -hmm. no emotion, mm -hmm. Yeah, so things no like that, things like energy. that would never happen in a professional massage therapy mm -hmm. session so that they understand what the norms are, what's normal, yes. and what's abnormal in a mm -hmm. session. I, when I was a new therapist, I had a strategy that worked for me. And again, with ethics, these aren't things that will, the ideas will work for everyone, but the exact 
thing that each of us do may not work for everyone because you're going to be considering your personality, your comfort level, uh, the way you communicate, all those things will factor in. Mm -hmm. But I used to have people come in and um, I would sometimes get, frequently enough that it stood out to me, but I would get asked or um, I get asked, do a lot of people hit on you, you know? And you get hit on all the time as a massage therapist. <laughs> And I would always respond with, no, no, no one ever, ever hits on me. That would be so creepy to hit on your massage therapist. And because that was my response, no one ever did. And I sort of pre-lived the scenario, which we'll be talking about in a little bit, but I had gone there in advance to think about what the best response would be for me. Mm -hmm. And that was one that fit with my personality. It also, it allowed the client to save face. And it also established boundaries that, you know, hitting on your massage therapist, flirting with your medical practitioner, whether it's your massage therapist, whether it's a counselor, whether it's your doctor, whether it's a nurse, all those things are abnormal. They're actually not normal. And so it established that boundary so that if the person did continue and if they did flirt with me or if they did um, do anything that was inappropriate in the professional setting, they would know that they were going to be self-identifying as someone kind of creepy, you know? So that worked for me. Um, are there any that you've used or anything that you've heard of that's been effective in that realm? I've, I've definitely used a few. I think that for the most part, some of the things that have worked best for me has been those professional comments. I remember mm -hmm. early on as well, there yeah. was a time that I was told that my massage had been so amazing that they would like to reciprocate. <laughs> and if I would like to come back to their room so they could uh, reciprocate. Uh, and they had grabbed my hand as I had finished a stroke on the arm. And mm -hmm. I, I... We would not laugh during I, the session, but it's laughable to <laughs> us because it's a profession. We're not yeah. going to reciprocate any more than uh, after you put an IV in someone as a nurse or as a medical practitioner that you're going to have them do that with you. Yeah, you know? and I didn't laugh. So, I just very yeah. kindly um, removed my hand from theirs and I said... That's very kind of you, but I already have plans. Mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. 20 years ago. I've learned mm -hmm. so much since then. Yeah. Uh, but and I hadn't learned anything at that point. So in the moment, I just mm -hmm. responded with, that's yeah. very nice of you, but mm -hmm. no. Um, mm -hmm. And now I would probably say something more along the lines of, mm -hmm. that would be inappropriate, mm -hmm. very clear and concisely. But mm -hmm. I remember I still, I didn't have much, I didn't have any emotion to it. Mm -hmm. I just said, that's mm -hmm. nice of you, but, mm -hmm. but no, in essence, is what mm -hmm. I had said. Yeah. So it's very interesting, and there yeah. was no emotion. It was just like, that's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could also but without shaming, them. right? Without there shaming. There was no reason yeah, to. It's, there's, we want to, if we can possibly just manage the session, because with the, we'll talk about power differential later in another video mm -hmm. series, but the therapist is the professional in mm -hmm. this situation, yes. and they have the power differential stacked in their odds, and they are um, stacked for them, and they're actually responsible for making sure that the session, uh, that that client is able to receive healing work. You know, If that client starts to go into the realm of repetitive things, or if it turns into sexual harassment, yes. or a, certainly a sexual assault, anything like that, then you're ending the session. But today we're not talking about that level. We're actually talking about things that are more in the realm of the client just needs to be educated, and the therapist needs to remember that they are actually the professional, and they are responsible within that realm of managing the session of educating the client about what's normal, what's abnormal, and what the boundaries are mm -hmm. of the session. Okay, so our second one that we wanted to yep. talk about is we wanted to talk about keeping the focus on the point of a massage therapy session, okay? So it really is, just in all professional realms, it's really important to keep the focus on the point of, of what you're doing there. Yes. I saw an excellent example of this the other day, and it wasn't in massage therapy, but it really stood out to me. This cashier, at, uh, we have a town in Utah called Beaver, and we also have a town in Utah called Fillmore, and we also have a town in Utah called Mona. So it's like ready for, you know, pervy jokes, right? It's like too easy. And so anyway, so I was driving from Salt Lake to St. George, and you go by Beaver, and I stopped there, and I 
got gas and then for my car and then I um, went in to uh, to buy a water or something and when I was getting gas I saw this group of ladies pull up and they were laughing and they had like all this energy of just like fun and excitement and they all got out and then one of the ladies that had been in that vehicle she was right in front of me uh, and she was checking out like buying a drink or something right before me but I could hear everything she was saying we were pretty close and she said to the cashier she said and it was a male cashier mm -hmm. she goes I think you guys need to change the order of your towns my, my girlfriends and I have been laughing about it. you need to change the order and uh, the order should be like Fillmore Beaver Mona like some something that was supposed to be like this uh, perverted joke like a dirty joke and the cashier handled it perfectly he said uh, that's 375 ma'am and she tried again and she's like something about like beaver isn't it do you get and he's like he just said is there anything else I can help you with and the energy just died like it fell flat died and she mm -hmm. said I know you know and kind of like diverted her eyes and kind of walked out like a little bit with her head down I thought it was perfect yeah and it still did allow her it to is. save face he didn't have to shame her he didn't have to do anything except for stay with the point of their transaction. Absolutely. And in that situation, it's really important to do that. So whereas it is okay and even nice to, of course, be compassionate and uh, you do sometimes talk to the clients, you ask about their families and about their lives, mm -hmm. you know, to some extent. But usually with massage therapy, you really are focused on allowing that person to have space for connecting their mind and their body. And a lot of that is in silence because they really need to be able to have that silence to do that internal work. Absolutely. So we do have a little bit different form that isn't incredibly chatty, you know, in a typical session. So it benefits the client to bring focus back to the work that we're doing. Um, some examples of that would be, we could use that example with the, the last comment that we had about the necking that it would be also good after you said something like that would never happen in a professional setting then you could also say something like okay like go down to their shoulders or something and say okay i'm gonna have you go and take a deep breath good okay and then as they you know exhale you could come up along the erector spinae musculature you know and along the neck and stuff and just bring that focus back to the massage therapy work that you're doing absolutely yeah, yeah reminding them to take a deep breath, focusing mm -hmm. in. It's mm -hmm. really important because the point of the session is to help healing, but also for education of the body. Mm -hmm. If they're focused on talking, of chatting, of making comments, then they're not focused internally on what's happening in their body. Right. They're not focusing on the tension and the stress and where we can actually unlock our own stress and tension mm -hmm. by breathing into it. Right. Rather than focusing in our mind of all that's going on, it's a great escape. Right. Why not focus on the body and, and allow ourselves to let go and just have that moment mm -hmm. of healing? Yeah, get out of all that mind chatter, get out of that be into your body to and be just whatever you are being. Notice where the it's, tension is, mm -hmm. melt the tension away, mm -hmm. and relax. Yeah. And not have to worry about making comments. Then you don't have to worry about making inappropriate comments. Totally. So Eckhart Tolle... Just um, to keep the conversation going. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, just to keep it going. Eckhart Tolle, uh, who I, I love, I love his philosophies. He says, you are never less yourself than when you're trying to be yourself. And when you receive a massage therapy session, you don't have to try to be anything. You get to just relax and you get to really fully be yourself, be like your healthy self and yeah. connect your mind and body. So that um, silence does go a long way in helping you to do that. Okay, so let's talk about our third thing that we wanted to, yes. third strategy. I think this one's really important. And it is, I used to call it pre-mortem and sometimes it's called pre-experiencing an outcome in your mind. Right. Um, we are calling it, we decided to call it future pacing. So mm -hmm. future pacing is something that I think they sometimes talk about in psychology. But future pacing would be, again, pre-experiencing and pre-thinking about these things before they happen so that you know how to respond. This is so important. 
knowing what your boundaries are and not being like militant. We're not trying to like catch anyone. We're trying to actually make sure that people understand how to engage in a healthy professional massage therapy session. Yes. You know, and we want both the client and the therapist to feel safe doing that. Mm -hmm. So pre-experiencing this in your mind and future pacing, uh, what would that, what would that look like? You know? So for example, with future pacing, this is really kind of an important thing is to understand, in my opinion, it's one of those things where we need to understand the client's behavior. We need to understand mm -hmm. their nervousness. We need to understand that in this time, like especially right now, there's so much, yeah. there's so little touch and healthy touch and, and safe touch. And so mm -hmm. clients are coming from all over the place. They're coming from different cultures and different backgrounds, different experiences. So sometimes this space is the only place to receive healing touch, but mm -hmm. they may not be used to it. And so the nervousness, the jitteriness, the, the, the different things, we need to be ready and aware to mm -hmm. be able to have those conversations, to be able to let them know they're okay. Right. It's okay to relax and let go. They're safe. Mm -hmm. This is a safe healing space um, where they can, they can just focus on their body, their healing, mm -hmm. and let that go. But in order to have that conversation, when we, as therapists, we need to put ourselves in the position of really, truly mm -hmm. guiding that. Right. We have to be in charge. Yeah, and we'll talk about the yeah. the power di differential yeah. another time. But but that mm -hmm. really plays a big role into it. Is just realizing that I am the therapist. Mm -hmm. it is my job to make a safe healing space for you. It's also my job to make sure that if you're feeling discomfort or anything, that I gear you towards what's appropriate mm -hmm. and what's right for your treatment. Right, and in a compassionate, kind, in a compassionate but kind. assertive way. Uh huh. So very professional. I do want to just make sure we note that this is not something that we deal with frequently. We don't have that many people that come in and exhibit inappropriate behavior. No. And when we do, most of it is in the realm of being really innocent and it is just something that requires a little bit of education. And then that person knows, then they know after that and then they can feel comfortable in that session. And they're actually relieved that they don't have to joke or that they can let go of that nervousness, that they can really just relax into their session. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, how often have you encountered someone being inappropriate in the session? You talked about you had a, a client that it was, you told me about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, has this been something that's happened frequently to you? Hardly ever. Yeah. Hardly ever. And I truly feel a lot of it is because of how mm. I enter the treatment. Right. This, this future pacing is I start the treatment. I begin before I get into the room. I start mm -hmm. with a professional demeanor when I pick them up. Mm -hmm. It's the handshake. It's the way I present myself. It's the energy. I don't, I don't give anything other than professional energy. Mm -hmm. I am here to create a safe healing space. Mm -hmm. And that is what I'm going to do. And without, the, within that, there will be nothing inappropriate on my side. Mm -hmm. And so from the mo I, moment I pick them up, from that moment on, I treat it as such. So if there's a comment or something that would be construed as inappropriate, um, excessive moving around the table, jitteriness and things like that, um, it's in the way I handle it. Mm -hmm. And so I've had very few right. inappropriate. Right. That first one, even mm -hmm. from that first one onward, um, that kind of set the tone for me as I'm always kind, compassionate, and I, I just am very clear about professionalism. I don't give it energy. And I haven't had much at all. And I've right. been a therapist for 20 years. Right. So, and we've found- Nothing major as we well. We found from speaking with other therapists that have had years of experience that that's typically the case. Um, that's also been the case with me that I've probably experienced someone being inappropriate, um, I don't know, maybe twice, you know, in almost 30 years. Yeah. 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 So in a lot of that, a lot of that is because of the way that we manage the session. Yeah. Now in saying that, we're not saying that it's someone's fault if they do have someone no. come in and they're inappropriate. Um, Definitely. I had someone that was, and it was pretty serious what this person mm -hmm. did. Um, 
But in that session, when I think back, I also, though it wasn't any a fault of my own, I also was initially giggly because I didn't know how to handle it, you know? Right. And I didn't act quickly. I actually, um, in hindsight, would have ended, you know, and made my decision, ended that session so much sooner, mm-hmm. you know? Um, this was a session where I was doing massage therapy at this person's home without anyone else there. Uh, that's not something that I would do now, you know? So right. all those things you want to, you want to consider. Mm-hmm. And if you are going to be doing massage therapy at someone's home, which is fine, that's legitimate, uh, you know, option, then you want to actually look at some of these things that can happen and come up with a safety plan and come up with a way that strategize about ways that you can deal with this effectively before it happens. Because, yes. because otherwise you'll be thrown into fight, flight, or freeze. And we would like for you to be able to focus. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's really important to note that um, we have to put ourselves in these scenarios in advance. Mm-hmm. We have to think about them. We have to make decisions. We have to talk, talk it through, say it out loud. Um, and yes, there have to be guidelines about how will I handle this situation? What would happen if, um, what would happen if someone touched themselves inappropriately? What mm-hmm. would happen if someone invited me back to their place mm-hmm. for, um, for reciprocation? What mm-hmm. would happen if, what would I say? And mm-hmm. if you've practiced that, Mm -hmm. then without emotion or without startling or shock, Mm -hmm. it can be easy to stay professional and unrattled. Definitely. And with that, Um, you you definitely, if someone, you know, you're working on someone and they said, um, I'd love to reciprocate and uh, work on you sometime as well, uh, laughing at that would definitely give the wrong message and may lead to that person doing that again to other therapists. Um, That person could be innocent they could, they could be a perpetrator that's grooming. They could be a person that has blurry boundaries and they just had a crush on you and they just didn't know and it was like their awkward way of asking for a date. It could be so many things at that point and you don't know, you right. know? So having some very professional, clear boundaries and strategies that you can use is imperative. So in that situation, what you did was great and it worked, it was effective. Um, We could also let that person know that we would only trade massage therapy sessions with a licensed massage therapist that's had Mm -hmm. training so that they understand that this isn't something where, you know, this is what we're doing on our date, you know? Right. And uh, there's a variety of things. There's more than one right. Uh, There's also more than one uh, ineffective way of dealing with these things. So we're going to continue this discussion, Mm -hmm. and we're actually doing a weekly ethics in action case study and we'll bring in some of our teachers and different therapists we think this is really important for our community of massage therapists to be having this discussion so thank you for agreeing to it christina hey for information on becoming a licensed massage therapist visit zmc.edu for information on continuing your education in massage therapy and body work visit studyhealing.com If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe.